France 1940, and the French Republic has fallen to the German Reich. With its armed forces having surrendered, huge amounts of captured war materials from rifles to tanks are being collected and put to use, but with many being considered obsolete, new and more wacky ideas would create some truly mad yet effective weapons, and thanks to Major Alfred Becker and his workshop, the Bocomando Becker in Paris, we got such things as the Rehenwerfer. The Rehenwerfer was in simple terms a multiple launch mortar system, and in some cases it launched rockets. But the most common variant used the 81mm Blatt MLE 27 over 31 mortar, which had been captured in large amounts in the invasion of France. These mortars, which were captured, would not be used by infantry forces, as their ammunition was different to the standard German 8cm mortar, and it would cause a logistical headache. And to be using multiple weapon systems with identical roles and effectiveness was pointless, so it was up to the German engineers to make use of them in other instances. The mortars would be mounted on a trailer or a vehicle, one of the most common being the Sumo A MCL half track artillery tractor, with many being caught in good condition from the French military, and with Germany facing a supply shortage of military equipment throughout the war, the use of captured vehicles, especially ones that could be maintained and built in foreign factories, to take the pressure off German industry was always a welcome proposal. The half-track artillery tractor was also a great vehicle for the basis of a mobile artillery vehicle, as it could deal with difficult terrain, even when carrying heavy weight, and it was fairly reliable and simple to fix, which was especially useful as these vehicles tended to be given to understrength and rearguard units, and with weapons such as the Neville Werfer were prioritised for more elite units, with their heavy firepower being greatly in need. The amount of mortars mounted varied a fair bit, but one of the most common variations was 10 tubes in two rows of five. But there are pictures of vehicles carrying 20 mortar tubes in rows of fives and tens. This gave the Remwerfer the ability to launch an entire mortar battery's worth of rounds in quick succession. The tubes were not all fired at once either, with the tubes going off rapidly with a small time interval to give a, give a fast yet constant bombardment on the target. The barrels were also angled slightly offset, with the edges leaning left or right, to spread the round over a large area for good harassment artillery fire to pin the enemy down so German forces could assault, or in many cases, use it as cover to withdraw. The ammunition it could fire came in many flavours. It had high explosive, incendiary, and smoke shells, offering a very flexible artillery vehicle that could lend its hand to all manner of tactical needs, be that killing the enemy, burning their positions, or laying a large smoke screen for advancing forces. And the fact they're able to use large amounts of captured French mortar stocks was a boon for the logistics elements of the German army. And even if these stocks ran low, the mortar shells were easily produced, even with the shortage of materials, which only got worse for Germany throughout the war. The crews of these artillery vehicles was normally around five men, with a driver who could also help with setting up and loading the weapon, one primary gunner, and three more men whose job was the operation of the mortars, including setup, loading and cleaning, and anything else required to keep the mortars pumping rounds out of their enemies. The fact that these vehicles and its weapons were very simple gave an edge to the units, with these crews not needing much training or brains to use them effectively. And maintenance being low especially compared to more advanced mobile artillery systems such as the Wesp, Hummel and Panzerwerfer. But these vehicles did deliver a far bigger punch at far greater range. Now in combat it is a far lesser known weapon than legends such as the Nebelwerfer. This is most likely as it was used by second rate combat units, a bit of a stopgap artillery piece. But its first major use was the Eastern Front, mainly from 1943, with the Rehemwerfer helping German army units which were often engaged in large-scale battle with Soviet forces. The need for mobile artillery that could provide rapid, overwhelming barrages made the Rehemwerfer a valuable asset, especially when facing large formations of Soviet infantry or lightly armoured vehicles. It also showed good effect in countering Soviet offensives as the Red Army launched increasingly aggressive counter-offensives after the Battle of Stalingrad. German units often relied on weapons like the Rehenwerfer to hold back large Soviet infantry advances. This weapon was particularly effective in disrupting massed infantry assaults and providing suppressive fire during defensive retreats, not bad for a makeshift vehicle from the remains of the battered French army. The Rehenwerfer also excelled in covering retreats and rearguard actions, especially in the later stages of the war, especially after 1943 when the Wehrmacht was often on the defensive retreating westward. During this period, the Rehemwerfer was used in multiple rearguard actions providing artillery cover as German forces retreated from Soviet advances. 
Its mobility and quick setup made it ideal for this purpose, as it could be rapidly deployed to find and eliminate the enemy and do counter artillery fire. It was also particularly useful for supporting infantry during static and mobile defences, and in urban settings such as during the defences of cities like Konigsberg or Breslau, it was used to saturate areas with explosive rounds, inflicting heavy casualties on enemy forces trying to advance through the narrow streets or open fields, and with the high trajectory of mortar rounds, it could hammer units out in the open, or even punch through the roofs of buildings, giving the guests inside a very unexpected surprise. On the Western Front, it saw limited but effective use, particularly during the Battle of the Bulge, where the German army attempted to launch a major counteroffensive through the Ardennes Forest. Supporting infantry and armour in this campaign, the Rehemwerfer was used to provide fire support for German infantry and armour as they pushed through the dense forest and tried to overwhelm the Allied lines. The weapon's rapid barrage capabilities allowed for quick suppression of defensive positions, though it was often outmatched by our Allied artillery and air superiority which could unleash insane levels of firepower in comparison. In the final stages of the war, resource scarcity for the Germans increased massively in fuel, ammunition and other supplies. Weapons like the Rehemwerfer became more prominent in secondary units. These units, often facing significant disadvantage in terms of heavy artillery or armour, used the Rehemwerfer to maximise their defensive capabilities, especially in delaying actions and local counterattacks. And during the fall of Germany, the Rehemwerfer was used in some of the last defensive battles in Germany, such as during the defence of Berlin and other German cities under siege. It was often deployed by makeshift units or hastily assembled formations, reflecting its utility as a rapidly deployable last-ditch weapon for short-range artillery support. The Rehemwerfer, even though not the best artillery weapon, proved itself many times over, and the fact it came from captured stocks and was easy to use for its crew and simple to maintain with a very low resource cost for a struggling German industry and logistics train, showed this makeshift weapon system to be worth its weight many times over, and showed that sometimes the simple weapons are far more effective than the overcomplicated wonder weapons. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Rehemwerfer, something a little bit different, a little bit of a crazy vehicle out there that I just kind of stumbled across, and it will lead on to our next uh, video where we will be talking about Mr. Major Alfred Becker himself, who made a lot of these weird and wonderful vehicles and how he led them into battle. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone, and you guys have a fantastic evening.